Alrighty, today we are going to be making our own shelf here. This is made out of a motorcycle sprocket, some scrap steel, and some reclaimed lumber that I burnt. And that's about all it is. Um, I quite like the look of it like this. It kind of fits in with the rest of the wood in my house a little bit, and I ride motorcycles. So, there we go. And uh, when we get into this, this does require a welder and an angle grinder, which are going to be your two big tools. Uh, kind of expensive ones. Not at the end of the world, but I don't really know a way to do it without them. So there is that. Other than that, you will need, I mean, kind of your finish of choice. Sandpaper, propane torch. Relatively basic stuff. So other than that, let's get into it. And I'll show you how I made this. So this is what we're starting with. Just a standard used sprocket. Decently wore, but it doesn't really matter. And, uh... I'll get her degreased a little bit, and then we'll start marking out where we want to cut it to get it to fit. It's looking much better. I just used some xylene to kind of get the grease off. Now I'm going to use a paint stripping disc, uh, which is like a super strong scotch pad, scotch bright pad on my grinder. I'm going to take off the paint on both sides, so that way I can mark it up easier. Now if you don't have one of these, a wire wheel will work great. Um, even hand sanding it, it doesn't matter. And you don't, have to, you don't even have to take all the paint on if you, off if you don't want. It's just uh, it's going to get in the way you're welding later. So There we go. So you can see what that stripper disc did. Got all the paint off real nice. Gives you a very shiny surface. And now I went ahead and I marked it into quadrants. On this particular sprocket off my KLR, they are held on with eight bolts, so it makes it very easy to split it into quarters. Some bikes might not be an easy multiple, so you'll have to pay attention to that. And I, I was thinking about cutting right through bolt holes, but I kind of want to have a full window right in the center of my bracket, so that's why I chose to cut through there and there. We won't have a whole lot of surface area to weld to, but that's fine. It's, there's going to be more than enough strength-wise. There's nothing to worry about there. So now I'm going to get the cutoff wheel on the grinder, and I will just quick zip through all those sections, and then we will clean it up with the grinder to be ready to go. Alright, so I got my four sections separated, and then I actually went through and I put a slight bevel to take off that burr. We don't want to go too deep, we're probably going to want that weld to sit a little proud, but... Another thing to watch out for is this particular sprocket was a 44 tooth, which means that we end up equal when you divide it into four. Now, let's see how we line up perfectly on our start and stops on the front, on the whole way around between sections. If this was, say, a 43 tooth, it wouldn't be like that. So, if you're very, very particular, I don't know, make sure you get a sprocket that's divisible by four. So now, we're pretty much done with this. We're gonna grab our steel that we're gonna make the flats out of. For this particular shelf, I'm gonna use an inch and a half by eighth flat bar, um, mostly because I have this on hand. It doesn't really matter what you use. You can use thicker, you can use thinner, you can use skinnier, you can use wider. It's all what you want it to look like. And then the other thing for how long we need to go on here, so if you take your quarter and you put it on your square, so we start at three, go to about seven and a half, I'm going to go up to eight, so I need five inch pieces, and that will get me beyond that. So I'll cut four five inch pieces. You could also cut two ten inch pieces and then bend to ninety in the middle. I'm not really set up to bend. So I'm going to cut and weld. So I cut my four pieces of flat bar, and on mine, I'm going to do a rounded end on the, on the outsides. So I just uh, took a washer that was kind of roughly the right size, marked around it, and then I will grind that and smooth that out. And you can see I did the same paint stripping disc on these to get rid of any mill scale. I also had surface rust on this steel. Um, plus, I'm going for that uniform brushed look, so that's why I did that. So I will grind that, and then we will put some holes in it for mounting on the wall, because it's much easier to do that now than later. So now I got all those corners rounded off, and what you can see here is I clamped all four of them together, exactly, lined up, so I can treat them all as one, so it'll go much faster. And now I will mark my holes for where I'm going to have my mounting screws. This is uh, harder to hold than I expected, but um, 
So, you know, up here is going to be the corner. So you don't want to put your holes super close up here because it'll be hard to get to. So we're going to go like here and here. So I'll mark those out, center punch them, and then get them drilled. All right, you can see here all four are done. And I drilled them all when they were clamped together. So they're all identical. They're all shaped the same. And uh, I went one inch from the top, one inch from the bottom, and then a quarter inch in. This will also depend on what size screws you're planning on using. So take that into account to make sure that your heads aren't going to stick off to the side or that um, you're going to be able to actually fit it through. So make sure you take that into account with your size of your hole and your position in. Now we get to get the actual welder out, so I'll get set up for that. Alright, so now i got two of these tabs mocked up. This is just a piece of 3x3 three three square tubing that I use a lot for jigging. You could also do this with a 2x4 or a 4x4, four four. just the steel works better. And so I just got it clamped on each side. And I've got the tips coming together, so then I will throw a tack on the top here, and then tack on the bottom, and then I'll finish weld this later. Because if we were to just weld this outside fully right now, it would warp and pull to over 90 degrees. So we'll hold up on that until we get this corner piece in. Alright, so now I just got the two little tacks on there, and now we can start lining up put these guys in. So now, I could have drawn a line, probably should have drawn a line, but I'm just going to eyeball it, and tack them in place, and then uh, if it looks good, then I'll fully weld it. So I've got a tack here, and a tack on the other side of there, and it's where I want it. So now I'm going to weld in these other positions, Now I'm going to alternate like this side and this side, so I don't just do all this side and kind of pull it, so I kind of want to alternate. And then when I'll come back and I'll grind those two tacks out, and weld them in further. And then I'll weld up that corner, and then we will uh, make sure that she looks all pretty like. So now I got all the welding done on both, and now I'm going to do a little bit of like wire wheeling, and like I got to get these corners flat and square, and let it cool down first, and then we'll uh, show you what it looks like in the end. So now here's my 1x4, these are just some pine boards I ended up finding on the side of the road. And now I've got a little torch here, got a flame spreader on it. So now we're going to start to get a little bit of color on here, and then we'll go from there. Now you can see I'm going relatively dark, because uh, I plan on sanding this. And it will get darker depending on what finish you decide to put on it. But, you know, you don't have to go this dark. You don't have to do it at all. It's all how you want it. So when you sand it, it will get much lighter. And here I am being uneven. Oopsie daisy. Now if you weren't planning on sanding it, you just want to do a very light, you know, that's another option. So I will keep doing this and I'll do the other sides and edges as well. So now that there is a decent dark on all of it, you can kind of decide how you want to finish it. There's a lot of ways to go about it. I'll show you the, some of the things I tested on this. This is a piece of the same wood. So on this side, I made this, this was black when I started. And then I took a wire brush, and I went with the grain, and then it kind of digs out the low spots, and then leaves the high spots. Takes out the soft wood, leaves the high dark wood. And then this side, I did the same thing, but then I took a sandpaper over top of it, and then I used the boiled, I used boiled linseed oil and uh, mineral spirits, 50-50, wiped it on. So that's what they come out as, you know, decent looking. But I'm going to go with this side. This matches what I've got in my house better. Uh, so this side I did a relatively light, like this, where you can still see where it's not all black. And I did 100 grit sandpaper, went over it. And then that same boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits, wiped it on there. And then so this is what it looks like after sanding. This looks like with the boiled linseed oil on it. And of course, it'll get less. Oh, right there is the light. Hoo hoo. Uh, it'll dull a little bit over time as the mineral spirits evaporate and all that. But so that's the finish I'm going to go with. So then I will sand this and put my finish on it. And there we are sanded. Now I didn't really use a block at all for this uh, because I didn't care that it was even. You know, it's darker right there and it's lighter right there. It's dark in the middle. You know, because that's a low spot. It must have gotten hit by something at some point. 
That's just, I'm going to leave it like that. You can sand it down perfectly flat if you'd like. But another thing is your corners. So if you want round corners, you know, kind of round it off like this. You know, it's just so it's smooth. Decide if you want them lighter or darker. Because if you want them lighter, sand that round in after you burn it. If you want them darker, you have to sand that round in before you burn it. Because I want them lighter, so that's why the sandpaper, so I did it after, and now the sandpaper brought it down to nice bright wood. So just one more thing to think of. And now, uh, if you also notice, I'm doing this on the same piece of steel I was welding on. Because again, I'm not worried about putting dings or anything in it, because it's kind of supposed to look like it's got dings in it. Now I'm going to put some finish on it, at least uh, first coat, and then we'll see how it looks. Alrighty, I think that turned out pretty good. Uh, it's actually darker than I was thinking. I kind of wish I had sanded it more, but it'll be, it'll work out fine. This is what I was talking about with those light corners. See how this corner is like bare pine, um, because well, I sanded away all the char. Same with this side. Got that nice white streak running down. Which again, it's all what you want. So I'm just putting my mineral spirits on with uh, basically tough paper towels, shop paper towels. Rags would work great. And uh, you put it put it on pretty thick because it, at least the, especially this super dry pine that I have, um, this thing doesn't have a lick of moisture in it. Um, so if you're using store bought stuff. You'll have a lot more moisture in it, but, or at least if you just bought it. So it'll soak up quite a bit. So I'm going to let this sit overnight at least, and then I'll see if I want to do more or if I want to attach my supports to it. But there we go. Alrighty, so now these are all cleaned up. The main thing I had to do was just make sure this corner wasn't bubbled up so it would sit flat against the board and the wall. Other than that, uh, there's a couple BBs I took out. And I'm not going to paint these. I'm going to do the same boiled linseed oil on these. It will darken them slightly, but not a whole lot. So I'll keep the industrial look here. And then uh, we'll get them onto the board after I put the finish on them. So I nailed this side down. So you got my four nails in. I just went in two inches from the edge and then made sure it was square. Line it up at the back. Now you're going to want to favor if anything, you want this back because you always want this to sit flat against your wall, but it's all right if the board is slightly, it's like a quarter inch away or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. So, you know, so bad. Okay. So, so I'll nail this one down and then I can show you what it guys looks like on a wall. And there we go. Brackets on, on the wall. There we go. I think it looks, I think it turned out pretty good. My lighting in this room is not great, so sorry about that, but there's some close-ups of how, how it all turned out. Um, if you're going to hang it upside down like this, I suggest using screws instead of nails right there, but uh, I'm not going to keep it in this room. This isn't where it's going eventually. I just wanted to get it up on a wall just for now, just to show you guys. So, no, well, I think they turn out pretty neat. Um, of course, you can do it the other way. But, and so there you go. That's, they're not, it's not super hard to do. It takes a little bit of time, um, to get those brackets made. But after that, it turns out pretty good. Um, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put this one yet. What orientation? I don't know yet. Um, I just kind of made it to made it, make it. So, you know, anyways, uh, thanks for, uh, watching along. Hope if, if you try one, let me know. Hopefully it goes well.